50, General. 10.50 a.m. No word from the enemy, huh? No, sir. All outposts are silent. All right. They're asking for it, and they're going to get it. Colonel, the hour of decision has arrived. We attack Aachen. This is United Press correspondent Henry Gorell reporting on the hour of decision at the doomed German city of Aachen. The day broke gray and cold. A white, chilly mist shrouded the 1,100-year-old city of German emperors. But the German troops in Aachen were not worried about the chilly mist. Their concern was a more lethal pall overhanging the city. A pall of tough American troops encircling the entire area, except for a so-called suicide corridor less than a mile wide to the east. That was the situation when the commanding American general told me at his headquarters... Few Germans might get through, but I don't think many will want to risk our artillery fire. Isn't there a possibility of the Germans from the outside attempting to widen that corridor and reinforce the Germans at Aachen? They'll never get through, Gorel. The German garrison and civilians in Aachen face two alternatives. Surrender or death. Take that call, Private Kading. Yes, sir. Hello? King 4 calling Red Heart. King 4 calling Red Heart. It's one of our scout planes over the corridor. I'll take it. This is Red Heart, King 4. Go ahead. Enemy tanks and half-tracks approaching from the east. Looks like they're going to try and widen the corridor. That is all. Message received, King 4. Hello. Hello, get me headquarters. Hurry. Hello, Colonel Forbes. Scout planes report enemy from the east advancing on corridor with heavy armor. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, Gorel, you're going to see something now. Colonel Forbes. Yes, sir? Batteries A to F. Get the range and fire along the line. Yes, sir. And don't let up, you understand? Yes, sir. Batteries A to F. Range 2,000. 2,500 and 3,000. Range 2,000. 2,500 and 3,000. Deflection... Zero. Deflection, zero. Ten rounds, high explosives. Steady. Ten rounds. Steady. Steady. Fire. Fire. on a hill with a general and watched the American long tom cannons cut loose with a murderous barrage that split the advancing German armored column in half. The tail of the column withdrew. The forward elements raced to the outskirts of the narrow corridor to join the hard-pressed German infantry. Again, our artillery opened up, and in a few minutes, the Germans' last attempt to reinforce Aachen had been smashed. Back at the American commander's headquarters. Well, Gorel, it's now or never. Colonel Forbes. Yes, sir. Fetch me three of your best men. Make it uh, two officers and one enlisted man. Make sure one of them speaks German. Yes, sir, General. Well, Gorel, can you guess the next move? Well, I'd say that you're about to send the German commander at Aachen an ultimatum. And I would say, Gorel, that you are correct. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have called you here to deliver an ultimatum to the commander of the German garrison at Aachen. Which one of you speaks German? I, sir. Uh, Lieutenant William Bohm, sir. You're acquainted with the military formalities? Yes, sir. Good. Now, uh, you... Lieutenant George Maffey, sir. You, Maffey, will deliver my ultimatum. And Private... Kenneth Kading, sir. You, Private Kenneth Kading, will carry the flag of truce. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Maffey, here's your message. That's all, gentlemen, and good luck. I accompanied those three American soldiers, Maffey, Bohm, and Kading, to our last outpost, and then watched their backs grow smaller in the distance as they approached the German lines. 
I glanced at my watch. The time was ten minutes to eleven in the morning. Ten minutes to eleven. Halt! Wer ist da? Wir sind Amerikaner. Wir haben einen Depesche für Ihren Kommandant. I can speak English. Message for our commander, did you say? Yes, yeah, right. A message for your commander. Give it to me. I will give you a receipt. <coughs> Stillstand! At Passage! I'm sorry. Better keep that flag high. Is that a blind? Here's your receipt. Thank you. Now I must blindfold you and take you to my lieutenant. Turn around. <laughs> Twelve hours passed, still with no reply from the German garrison. Then on Radio Berlin... Radio Berlin! This is Radio Berlin! The American commander has called on the German garrison at Aachen to surrender within 24 hours or face destruction. Our answer is that we reject that ultimatum. The city where the coronation of 37 German emperors took place cannot be asked to surrender. That's enough. Colonel Forbes. Yes, sir, General. Will you come in, please? Well, Gorel, there's nothing to do but show them that our planes and guns will turn Aachen into a mass of ruin and rubble. An example of the fate that awaits every German city resisting Allied arms. Yes, sir, General. Colonel, I want you to put every plane in this area on the alert, ready for immediate takeoff. Yes, sir. Inspect all artillery batteries and see that sufficient incendiaries and high explosive shells are on hand. Right away, sir. One thing more. Order all sound trucks out the first thing tomorrow morning. I'll prepare the proclamation I want broadcast tomorrow. That's all, Colonel. Hurry. Those night hours on the front before Aachen were the longest I've ever spent in my life. I watched mechanics scramble over dive bombers. Watched them move up heavy bombs ready for instant loading. Watched the artillerymen check their giant guns while scout planes flew over the city dropping thousands of leaflets containing the surrender terms and calling upon the city to give in. The answer was silence. When daylight broke, the general ordered out the sound trucks to broadcast his final warning to the garrison and civilians of Aachen. The fate of Aachen is in your hands. You face the senseless death of thousands of your men and the destruction of your city. You alone have the power and authority to prevent this. General. 10.50 a.m. No word from the enemy, huh? No, sir. All outposts are silent. All right. They're asking for it, and they're going to get it. Colonel Forbes, the hour of decision has arrived. We attack Aachen. Yes, sir. Order all planes to bomb up. Alert the artillery. Tell Captain Roberts... Captain Roberts, Captain Before the encircled city, I watched Aachen go to its fate. That deadly hail of fire and hot steel was more than any human could stand. And soon, from the outskirts, appeared a great mass of German civilians and soldiers, their screams and hoarse cries echoing across the battlefield. Dazed and sobbing, their faces contorted with fear, they streamed into our lines by the hundreds. terrified civilians left the ancient city of Aachen, dying under a bright blue sky. 
heaving under the dreadful symphony of bombs and bullets. Colonel Forbes, after surveying this dreadful scene, summed it up when he said to me, This is the way every town in Germany should look. Then there wouldn't be any more war for a while. United Press correspondent Henry Gorell's dramatic story of the death of Aachen, based on the famous American ultimatum, Surrender or Die. We will present another in this series in the near future. Be sure to listen. And meanwhile, remember to listen for United Press news on the air. Look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. They are your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.